actually uh, applied to the graduate training schemes of a number of big companies and uh, I joined Unilever. I had such a varied and wacky experience there <laughs> yeah. that I actually stayed there for 11 years, which is quite unusual mm. these days. Um, but it, it, Unilever was a very, very good employer and particularly a very, very good trainer both uh, in the form of formal training courses mm -hmm. and training programs, but also in the sort of experience and exposure that a big company like that, mm -hmm. you know, was able to give. When you're in a large company, particularly a very large benevolent and paternalistic type of company, you are, you know, you're in a huge, wonderful kind of cocoon comfort blanket. Mm. Everything is there for you, you know, if you've got a grievance as a process, if you want to, you know, to change, change your employment, there's a process, mm. um, you know, you can see your career path, everything is, everything is kind of done for you. Yeah. Um, however, when you are in a large company, you have to play by their rules. Um, which you may or may not be happy to do and some people are very happy to live in that kind of structured environment and some people are less happy to live in it. It is sort of parental and, and protective and mm. nurturing. When you're working for yourself there's no comfort blanket anymore. Mm. When you're relatively young, let's say in your 20s, I think probably working in a larger organisation is, is a good place to kind of learn the ropes and to learn what you like, what styles of work you like, what styles of management you like or don't like. Um, and it's all good training for if you, you know, ever have your own business subsequently. In a big company, um, you are naturally going to be more, more exposed to more experts because it's just bigger. Yeah. So if you did have the opportunity early on in your career to join a bigger organisation, you could um, just be more exposed to you know, finance things, ops things, etc., that you might not in a smaller organisation. Okay. And so I think you're more likely to learn more, more quickly. So even if your ultimate feeling is, I want to work in a small company, if you do get a chance to get onto a graduate programme or just work in a big organisation, I think it's a really useful okay. training ground. Yeah. It's an interesting question. I would say that uh, it, it can be different people, but it can also be the same person at a different point in their career. And I think there's a there's a there's a traditional paradigm of you, you you leave university and you go and join a big company. I mean that goes back to the industrial revolution or whatever. You know, yeah. go and work for the factory or whatever. But that's not always the right thing for everybody. Um, it's yeah, it's never been easier to start a business. I mean that's a phrase that I absolutely fundamentally believe. Uh, anyone can get out there and create something. Mm -hmm. There's all the tools you need on the line. There's um, there's the cultural reality that people experience expect or people don't expect you to do certain things you can you can do things for a short period of time and flex you can have a portfolio career all sorts of different things having said that there is a lot of benefits from going through a uh, going to joining a large company particularly one that actually invests in you as an individual or is known to be investing in in, in the people I've been very lucky I, I've worked for three companies that, that do that and I learned a huge amount from that absolutely massive and that has helped me to uh, establish myself in my or establish my own business, um, small businesses can have the same have a progressive culture and investment, but sometimes the funds that they have to invest in people and training is, is much more limited, and and that's you know so if you are looking for something that's um, that has some very traditional big investment, then maybe a bigger company is the right thing to, to start with. So graduated from uni and wanted to go into fashion and when I first started that was my career path that's what I saw myself doing and then I'd been working in fashion for four or five years and it wasn't really giving me what I wanted the career progression that I thought I would have had hadn't really happened but not because I couldn't have done it it just didn't really pan out that way and I was like okay so I'm gonna try something completely different and that's when I went and worked for Eve Sleep, which is the big yellow mattress company that you've probably seen plastered over 
every single underground tube and bus stop. Um, and I joined the company when it was 30 people, and then when I left it was something like 160. That's when I realised that like, working for a startup is what I wanted to do, or working in small businesses. Um, so I was doing the product development there. But that's when I was really put out of my comfort zone. So whereas I'd be making fashion before, I was now making baby mattresses and, <laughs> and print and packaging and bedding textiles. Um, and I was able to do all the design myself as well. So I was working in a really small team at the time. So there was a lot of autonomy over my work and working in a small company, you can kind of get stuck in cross-functionally. So say if I had an idea about a social media campaign that I wanted to pitch to my social media manager, I could walk over to the other side and just speak to her about it. And then we'd have a meeting with our CMO and then it'd be up the next couple of days. And I think cultural fit is another thing that is very important. So I would counsel anybody to think closely as one of that, of that as one of the criteria. What culture works for you best? Is it a formal culture? Is it an empowered culture? Is it a hierarchical culture? Is it a multicultural culture? What really floats your boat? I think some of that has to do with the individual themselves. I, I could imagine that some people would just shy, shy away from a big organisation because it, it's too monolithic, it potentially is too s slow moving, it might feel a bit fearsome, it might you know, culturally not feel like a great fit. Um, and working in a small organisation just maybe feel more lithe and more personal, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I think that one of a really useful thing to do would be to do some of these kind of Myers-Briggs tests and things early on in your life then. And I don't know if they're done at university today. I think they're probably not. But I think some of those kind of personal profile tests that you can just do yourself, just give you more insight into you Absolutely. and give you a view on, um, you know, whether you're very data oriented, whether you like structure, whether you uh, like rule following and all those sorts of things, which would help you along the way. Thank you.